What is going on in Mondstadt? That is a question a lot of us in the lore community have been asking, and it usually garners strong responses. Those who have other favorite nations claim that Mondstadt really doesn't have anything interesting to offer, especially when compared to the likes of Sumeru, Fontaine, and Liyue. Even those who agree that the Inazuma Archon quest was lacking feel Inazuma might offer a lot more lore-wise than Mondstadt, especially with the inclusion of Inkonomiya. It is true that all nations have an impact on the lore of Tibet and Genshin as a whole. It would be rather poor writing if it didn't. However, this video is going to focus on Mondstadt and how, despite being a nation available since the start of the game, we lack information about its overall place in the lore and game as a whole. This video will be the start of a series of videos looking at different facets of Mondstadt and, eventually, other nations. So for now, we will start with a very surface level overview look of things that indicate there might be more to Mondstadt than meets the eye. With all of this being said, let's get into it. While I would like to cover the Abyss Order in more depth in a later video, I do think it's strange how active they seem to be in Mondstadt specifically. This is not to say they aren't active in other areas, the Chasm is a great example of this, but Mondstadt, unlike the Chasm, doesn't have a direct connection to the Abyss, at least not that we're aware of. Additionally, I will be talking about the Inverted Statue, which I know can be a bit of a sore spot for some, but please just hear me out. It was not a statue of Morax, Kusanali, Baal, or Fosalor that was taken. It was a statue of Barbados. While some might argue this is because the quest happened early in the game, and therefore it made sense to have it be Mondstadt's Archon statue, I think that isn't a good enough point to discredit this idea. While I do agree if we're just comparing Liyue to Mondstadt, it makes more sense to have Mondstadt be selected to have a statue stolen, since Liyue has a death die and actively worships Morax. However, Genshin has been dropping hints about other nations in tons of different events and Archon quests prior to this. We heard Kusanali's voice in the Golden Apple Archipelago before Sumeru was released, We've had information on Notwan since Mondstadt came out, and we have information on Snezhnaya, a country we likely won't be visiting for at least another two years, and we learned about it back in the Liyue Archon quest. There's no reason that another Archon statue couldn't have been used. In fact, I would make the argument that the best Archon statue to use would have been Kusanali's. The Academia was already attempting to build their own god, Kusanali was only actively worshipped by a few people within Sumeru. Kusanali also has a connection to Ermin Soul, which would have been helpful if you're creating a false god. And spoilers for the Kari Bear Archon quests, but we know that Sumeru is where the Sinner God first appeared, inspiring the creation of the Abyss Order to begin with. That's not even mentioning Kadria, who we know was experimenting with the Abyss in some fashion and is likely below Sumeru. If the Abyss Order was trying to recreate the false god from Kari Bear's Archon quest, wouldn't it make more sense to use an Archon statue from Sumeru? The fact that Barbados' statue was chosen and defiled says something. I also do not think it's a coincidence that the God of Freedom would have his statue taken, bound in chains, and defiled by Abyssal magic. While we may not know exactly why Barbados' statue was chosen, it is obvious that it was chosen for a specific reason. We know that Snezhnaya likely borders Mondstadt, so the idea that the Fatui are well entrenched in the Nation of Freedom is not exactly an unusual or strange idea. What is more unusual is that the Fatui have been unable to make any significant moves against Mondstadt. From Diluc to the Knights, the Fatui seem to be in a stalemate with the Nation of Freedom. This wouldn't be surprising if Mondstadt was well manned, but this just isn't the case. 80% of their fighting force, as well as most of their senior members, are gone on an expedition with Varka. The Fatui, with all of their resources, don't have a specific reason to be waiting around and not pushing their advantage on Mondstadt, especially given their better weaponry and manpower. And yet, they do seem to be allowing the stalemate to continue. Why is the Zaritza waiting? Why not simply attack while Mondstadt is at their weakest? Their Archon no longer has a Gnosis, so surely Venti is not the reason that the Zaritza is staying her hand. Even if all-out war is not her goal, surely the Fatui could diplomatically be in a much better position than they currently are. 
So what is it about Mondstadt that's keeping them from acting further? Could there be something that we simply don't know about yet? Or are there perhaps characters that we haven't met yet that the Zaritza is trying to play somehow? Vanessa will likely get her own video sometime in the future, so this is more of a short thing I just wanted to include. We know that Vanessa was the first standalone knight, establishing the Knights of Favonius and creating Mondstadt as it is today. However, I want to focus on the fact that Vanessa ascended to Celestia and is the only confirmed human to have done so. There is some evidence to suggest that there was an Adeptus in Liyue who might have ascended to Celestia, but the wording is vague and it is mentioned that he quote unquote became a star, and given that we have evidence of the Adepti leaving their physical forms behind to turn into something more spiritual, as well as the mythological roots of the Adepti, I'm less inclined to believe that this was a true ascension to Celestia. Additionally, we do physically see Vanessa actually ascend to Celestia in the manga. Still, even if it is true that the Adeptus ascended to Celestia, Vanessa would be the only human character to have ascended to Celestia. And she is from Mondstadt. While the Statue of Barbados in the city of Mondstadt has the words Gateway to Celestia written under it, that is not where Venti goes to restore his power. He goes to Vanessa's tree, a place he says is directly connected to Celestia. I do not think it's a coincidence that Vanessa is the first confirmed person to ascend to Celestia, nor that her tree has a connection to Celestia itself. Once again, while this could have happened in any nation, the game goes out of its way in the Archon Quest to show us this location and explain the significance of it. Despite the fact that there may have been someone in Liyue who ascended, we have no confirmed sites in Liyue that directly connect it with Celestia, as we do in Mondstadt. Again, maybe this connection to Celestia is part of what's keeping Mondstadt safe. Or perhaps this connection to Celestia is what makes Vinti so uncomfortable when this topic is brought up. There is so much more to talk about with Mondstadt. All of this is just an introduction into the strange inconsistencies that plague the Nation of Freedom. From long-lost civilizations, to celestial sky nails, to Istaroth, to Barbados, to the Hexen Circle, there is so much more to discuss just in this one nation. While I have stated that Mondstadt is not the only place with lore significance in Genshin, it is interesting how little we still have for Mondstadt. With no Part 2 story quest for Venti, as well as no expansion on the map since Mondstadt was first introduced, it tells me that there is still much more to discover within the Nation of Freedom. However, what we do have in the lore also gives us tantalizing hints as to what might be in store for us later in the game, and it indicates to me that the groundwork is being laid for something to happen in the future. Something perhaps more sinister than we give it credit for. My next video will likely be on the topic of Venti and Istaroth, so if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to have a safe journey, and may the wind bless your travels.